Good evening everybody, it is Charlie and welcome back to another live stream on the Chatting Leeds YouTube channel. Hope everyone has had as good of a weekend as you all can given the circumstances. Just before we get into it in more detail, make sure that you are all smashing a like on the stream. It just helps get it out there to more people. Please subscribe to the channel if you are brand new as well. We're only about 130 subscribers away from hitting 3k which would mean a lot. So if you are new, please hit the subscribe button. It's completely free. Hit the notification bell and, of course, get all of your thoughts and opinions into the live chat and into the comments section if you're watching after the stream ends. I can see there's 14 of you in the building. Really good to see. Like I said, get all your thoughts in the chat and I will flash them up on screen. There's a few of you in the building already. JC, as always, evening, pal. How are we doing? Tintin says, hope the defeat hurts the players so much that they go and win the next three. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Um, Dave Brown saying, evening, mate, was fuming about yesterday's result. Don't think we played bad. It was just the finishing. Yeah, we'll um, come on to that in a little bit because I think, you know, now the dust has settled, obviously, I may have overreacted a little bit on the review that I did yesterday, but... As you can all appreciate, guys, when I left Ellen Road yesterday, I was absolutely spitting blood um, with a lot of them. Um, and I just didn't care about football at all um, last night. Try not to think about it the best that I can. But as I said, hope everyone is well, given the circumstances. And we'll get straight into it then. So obviously, as always, we'll discuss the lineup firstly. I was happy with it. You know, obviously, and, and I, I have to be honest, you know, uh, at half past 11 when the lineup came out i i was happy with it i was um we saw changes that let's be honest we all wanted or most of us wanted anyway um we saw connor roberts come in at right back which i thought was the good move to do and push great into the midfield to drop kamara i felt that was the right thing to do we obviously saw nonto come in for dan james as well um, which I felt was needed. I think Dan James hasn't quite been the same since the international break. Um, and then, you know, more importantly, we saw Patrick Bamford drop to the bench in place of Yoel Perot, which, um, look, I, I was just happy to see a, a change in the number nine position. I would have been happy with Joseph as well, but I, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I can kind of understand why he's not starting Matteo Joseph. But what I do think is that he should be coming on a lot sooner in games. But again, we will be coming to that. So yeah, it in in my opinion, the lineup was the best lineup that it could have been. Um which is why I'm just still so baffled as to why what happened happened in the game. Um I thought it was definitely the right starting eleven to get all three points and go top of the league. Um, but unfortunately, that wasn't to be. But, you know, at first glance and, you know, in the opening stages, I did feel like the starting eleven was the right thing to do. Um, so, yeah, let's just get into a few more of your comments. Yesterday was a huge disappointment, but it's not over yet. We played better yesterday than we did against Sunderland. Just weren't aggressive enough in the final third. Yeah, let's be honest, mate. Anything was going to be better than Sunderland, wasn't it? Because that was utter garbage um i felt like the first half yesterday was very good albeit apart from a goal um it was the second half for me where i i just feel like leeds leeds did bottle it in my opinion in 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 terms of an isolated game we bottled yesterday in my opinion because we started the game off really well even at nil nil at half time i wasn't really panicking that much i thought we've got these we can come out and then it just didn't feel quite the same in the second half. And I'm I'm really not sure why. We're all calling for Fark's head. He made a big mistake. Nonto should have never fetched him off. He was our best player in creating chances, but it's been a long season. I still... Yeah, and look, I, I, I may have criticisms of Farker at the minute, but I'm definitely not calling for his head um, like a... A few, you know, a small number of, of fans are. I, I, I just think it's really narrow-minded and really naive to just be calling for Farker's head. Yeah, a lot of it is on him, one hundred percent. But those players out there need to take a big level of the responsibility as well. Um, it is a young team, and a lot of them haven't played so many games in one season, and a lot of them have never been in this sort of 
promotion fight. Um, but you should still be beating the teams that you should be beating, in my opinion. Blackburn were coming into yesterday's game on the back of being hammered 5-0 by Bristol City. Bristol City, who, yes, we only beat 1-0, but we had completely outplayed them at Ashton Gate. Blackburn go down there, get murdered 5-0, but then they come up to Ellen Road and get a 1-0 win. You just couldn't write it. The Championship is like no other league in, in world football, in my opinion. Badgers is saying Bamford needs to be back in now. Um, no, I'm sorry, mate. That's... That's an outrageous take at the minute, in my opinion, anyway. But each to their own. F football is subjective, but definitely not for me, mate. Definitely not for me. Um, evening, Charlie, and everyone else. Oh, Paul, I'm well. I'm feeling better after yesterday. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling better um, in terms of my mood's a bit better. But in terms of the overall picture of the season, I'm I'm still where I kind of was at yesterday, in, in all honesty. Bamford needs to play against Burra, be up for it against his former club. I've, no, I, not for me. I'm sorry, but I have to. I have to be real with how I'm feeling. I, I don't want Bamford starting another game this season. I really don't. With how he's playing at the minute, I get why Bamford can be systematically better in the team, and you know at the out of the year first sort of nine or ten games brilliant was scoring goals was playing well confidence seemed like he was up but he's a streaky player is Patrick very very streaky player confidence player and confidence is on its ass as we speak right now I wouldn't be putting him back in but I think Farker will put him back in and that's the worrying thing for me Rutter is the problem, loses the ball all the time in the last five games. He's been awful. Yeah, I, I have to get on board with that, Dave. I have to agree. Look, I'm not saying he's the problem overall. I think, you know, there's a lot of factors which are going into the recent form at the minute. But I have to agree with the fact that last sort of five, six games, maybe, he hasn't been on it. And we all thought the hernia operation, you know, the hernia problem was the reason for it. He's had the operation on that now. It went well. It's all fine. And he's still playing the way that he, he was. Um, it, for me, at, at the minute, Rutter is best described to me at the minute as a moments player. Yeah, he loses the ball quite a lot and sometimes the ball bounces off him. But when something works for him, it really works. And I feel like that's why he gets picked week in, week out. On his day, Rutter is one of the best players in the league by a country mile. But at the minute, he's not. Um, would I drop Rutter at this stage of the season? No. Somerville's been poor recently, was really bad yesterday. But would I drop him? No. And people might say, well, Bamford's playing bad, but you, you want to drop him. But it's different with Paddy. Somerville and Rutter have both had great seasons up until maybe the last four, five, six games. Whereas Bamford, yes, started off the calendar year very well, but has gone back to default, has gone back to the old Patrick Bamford. That's the re that's the difference. Shelly saying, hope everyone's okay. I still feel sick after yesterday. We're in a rut and just nowhere. Yeah, exactly. I'm I'm a bit like that. Did you see the Liverpool game? I've always said if you don't see. Yeah, I, I didn't see it, mate. No, but I watched the majority of the Arsenal game and they look like the fumble in it as well. The title race in the Premier League and the automatic promotion race in the Championship are both going in a very similar way. Everyone just doesn't seem to want it at the minute. If Leicester wins Saturday, they will go four points clear of us and I think it is over. Um, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, I think if I'm... Yeah, there will Yeah, there will be four. No, I, even if they win that, I, I don't see how it's over, to be honest. But, you know, they've got West Brom and Southampton back-to-back -back in the next two games. Now, they've got West Brom, Southampton and Preston all in the space of a week. That is three tough fixtures to have back-to-back -back in the space of, what, six or seven days. Um 
our game players to change his photo. Yeah, 100%. Guys, there's loads of comments coming in. I do apologise if I don't manage to get through all of them. Nonto and Roberts were probably our two best players yesterday. The only reason I think we're going to Yeah, that, I've, I've heard that mentioned, but then if they're not 100% fit, why are they in the team? Need to drop Rutter now. He's been terrible lately. Put Nonto in the 10. I guess that's an option. I just don't think he would drop Rutter, and I personally wouldn't want him to drop Rutter either. Pro didn't affect us neither, though, yesterday. I thought Perot actually started the game off very well. But as it went on, he started to go back to type where he was fading out of the game, pretty much. Got every chance of beating middles, but they will not sit back and that was it. Yeah, and we'll be briefly speaking about the Borough game at the end of the stream, guys, so we'll we'll save that for then. This is the most rutter cream onto Archie Road and Furpo have played in their careers. It's a long season and it will take us to... Yeah, I guess so, yeah. James and some of them on the wings, and then Joseph up front with Nonto just behind. Yeah, again, there's a lot of people, a few people saying that. Yeah, and, and I get why you're saying it. I, I just don't think he does it. Been saying it for weeks. Bamford done. Yeah, fifth switch lose against Hull, Coventry, win last game, five points leads win. To, yeah, look, it's all ifs and buts. It's all if this happens, if this happens, but. We just need to focus on ourselves at the minute. You know, try and win all of the remaining three games if we can and hope for the best. But yeah, well, the first half yesterday was actually good, in my opinion. I feel we did play a lot better than the Sunderland game. I even said I think we won a corner in the first sort of minute and a half. And I, I turned around to the lad next to me and I said, that's already better than the whole 90 minutes against Sunderland. Um, so, yeah, it was better. We were pushing the pace. We were um, setting the tone early on. And we were playing some good stuff. Obviously, the set pieces, I mean, I'd, I'd love to know what goes on at Thorpe Patch. Um, do we practice corners? Do we practice free kicks? Why can we never beat the first man? I do not know. Uh, but other than that, I thought the first half was good. We had all, all of the ball. I think Blackburn had one chance through Schmodix, in which Melier makes a good save. But other than that, they just sat back, time wasted, um, conned the referee a lot, in my opinion. But, you know, it, gamesmanship at its finest. Um, but other than that, guys, I, I thought Leeds were good. And like I said earlier, at half time, I wasn't, wasn't worried. Um, in, in the slightest, I thought if we keep playing like this, if, if the game keeps going in the way that it is, we will break them down and we will win this game. Unfortunately, that wasn't to be. And obviously in the second half, I felt like it just completely went the other way. No creativity, no urgency. Um, wasting, you know, when we were getting chances, you know, we were just wasting it time and time again. Um, and we began... We became predictable, and I tweeted it out as I was walking back to the car after the game. Predictable FC. We might as well change our names to Predictable FC or Walk It In FC because every attack is the same sequence of play. It's the same sequence. Gruev to Ampadu, Ampadu to Furpo, Furpo back into Gray, Gray to Somerville, back to Gray, Furpo, then back to Ampadu, Rodon. Back to Ampadu. And it was just, it was just, we reverted back to the Sunderland game. And every time we did get in their box, nobody would pull the trigger. Why? It's been proven the non all goal against Millwall outside of the box went in. Nonto actually had a decent shot in the first half outside of the box. Keeper makes a good save, as did Connor Roberts. Why do we not do it more? We've got players with good quality shooting. Why do we not utilise it? We take about six touches in the box before any anyone pulls the trigger. And I, I, I was speaking to my uncle again today because we uh, met up for a dog walk um, with our dogs. And you know, I was saying like... I, I can't put my finger on what it actually is. Like, why have we 
sort of all of a sudden started playing like this. My uncle seems to think it's nerves, pure and simple. And I, I think it is it is a bit of nerves, but I'm thinking, is it is it fatigue? Is it confidence? Because when you think about it, we've we've played the same way all season. We've we've played the same way all season when you think about it. So why is it not working now? Have we been found out? That's a possibility. Like I was just saying, predictable FC. Managers and players, when they're preparing to face leads at the minute, they'll know how we attack. They'll just know. They'll know how we attack. But that's then up to Farker to change it up and do something about it. But we're not seeing any changes in game. His in-game management is poor at the minute. And that's putting it nicely. His subs, even when he makes the right sub, he makes it too late. Or he'll make the wrong sub too early. Like bringing Pat Bamford on yesterday with 25 minutes to go. But then bringing on Matteo Joseph with eight minutes to go after they scored. Or I think it was just before they scored, actually. So you bring him on with, let's call it 10 minutes. But you give Pat Bamford 25 or half an hour, because you know, there were five minutes added on. So you give Bamford half an hour, but you give Matteo Joseph 10 15. I just don't understand it. And like a few of you have said, um, Nonto, why did he come off? Why? Connor Roberts, why did he come off? Byron came on and did all right, I guess. James came on, didn't really do much. For me, if you're going to bring James on, I'd, I'd have took some of it off because I thought some of it was gash yesterday. I thought Rutter was gash. And Farker just had to go for it in the end. We had about six attackers on the pitch. Went to like a one-man midfield, took Gruev off as well who out of him and Gray was the better midfielder for me. I thought Gray looked really leggy yesterday. I think Gray actually needs a break against Middlesbrough. We'll be coming on to that shortly. But yeah, it's it's just recently it's been very frustrating to watch. Even the whole game that night, yes, we beat them 3-1, but that wasn't a 3-1 game at all. Really wasn't. We were poor that night for the majority. And if that penalty doesn't happen, that probably ends a draw. Yeah, very frustrating at the minute. Very, very frustrating. Hey, all Leeds United. Nobody can hit a dead ball, let alone in play. Embarrassing. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, brother, how are you? I'm all good, mate. I'm all good. If pressure was in the bed with this team they'd all sleep on the floor yeah guys there's a lot of comments coming through i'm sorry if i've not um read your comment out it's hard to keep track when they're coming in like this tactics are poor need to vary our points of attack don't just go left we have become predictable start joseph yep ashley buckland says we're too slow at how we're playing yep 100 too slow no urgency just lackluster football how bad are our corners every game we seem to get? Yeah, I, we had loads yesterday. I don't think any of them were decent. And look at this. 138 corners since we last scored. I think the last corner we scored was against Ipswich on the 23rd of December. So, yeah. The walking in has been happening all season. We just got away with it because teams couldn't deal with our energy. We're a lot slower now in build-up and I think it's down to fatigue and nerves. Yep, yeah, I agree. Nonto change made absolutely no sense and Gray looks tired. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Ellen Road review, absolutely. Grave one didn't make sense. Their goal came from a huge gap in midfield. Yep, yeah, exactly. But again, we're just fans, aren't we? We're not the manager. 
Can you see us winning up better because no three points there? We're done. We'll be finished. Um, as I'm sat here now, no, I, I, I don't think we beat Middlesbrough away. As I get closer to it, I'll get more optimistic and get more up for it. Um, it depends, obviously, you know, Southampton play midweek against Preston. That'll be an interesting one. And obviously Leicester play the early kickoff at half 12 on Saturday. We don't play till Monday night, which, you know, we'll have to wait and see, won't we? Um, obviously, Leeds play twice now um, before Ipswich even kick a ball again. So, you know, if we can win against Middlesbrough, if we can win against QPR, and then hopefully they kind of falter either against, you know, Hull or or Coventry. That's all you've got to... We're at that point of the season now where we're just going to be watching other games and hoping for the best, I guess. Jay's saying, I'm telling you now, they're not on Rob Robert Subs, we're down to fitness. Good news is we have nine days till birth. Yeah, so hopefully if those two players start again, they can play more of that game. Would you drop Somerville? No, I wouldn't. I can understand why you're asking the question. Um, I feel like he's been way off the boil recently. Um, I think it's the EFL Awards tonight as well. So he may he may be winning Championship Player of the Season today. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't drop him. No, I, I'd keep him in because he is arguably our best player. Um, we just need to try and play him into form. Over the next three games, Southampton play twice before we play. Yeah, exactly. And the six points behind us at the minute. So if they win both them games, the level one points with us, it's a good job that our our goal difference is far superior, way far superior actually. I believe. What's more alarming about the corners is that there's clearly no plan evident. It's knock it in, see what happens. Yeah, exactly. And then the odd time we'll try a short corner, which never works out either. So yeah, God knows. Southampton could easily get top two. Yeah, they could. That that again will come on to it in um in a in a bit. But yeah, they're well back in the mix now, one hundred percent. Does he can drop Cree? Yeah, exactly. You you can't drop some of them at the minute for me. Um but let's just speak about the Blackburn goal then as an isolated incident. Someone's already touched upon it. You know, the fact that he brought Gruev off meant that we were more open in midfield. Um and obviously, I, I'd forgotten about it because it was all just a bit of a blur. Um, being in the ground, I couldn't quite believe what I was seeing with my eyes um, in front of me. But I watched it back last night and this morning. Their goal comes from a goal kick. So it's a goal kick, and it's as simple as the keeper takes it, does a header down or does a flick on. Their number 10 gets the ball on the half turn. And literally, it's the easiest of through balls into Schmodix. It doesn't even need to take a touch. Nice finish from him, in fairness. Don't think Melier could be blamed for any of it. But how on earth are we so open? I know he's took Gruev off. And I get, you know, we're a man, a man less in midfield. But, you know, at Archie Gray, like, what are you doing? How are you not tracking the run of their number 10? Can't remember what his name was, but how is he not tracking the run? You know, Gray, I know Gray's 18 and he's a young player, but he's, he is a midfielder. People say he's a midfielder. So why is he not doing the job of a midfielder? And then, you know, Ampadu and Rodon kind of get dragged in, which leaves the space in for Schmodix. Ampadu tries his best to get there, but obviously, unfortunately, can't beat Schmodix to the punch. And it's 1-0 Blackburn on the 82nd minute. And I was thinking to myself during the second half, whoever scores first in this game wins. I was thinking, you know, if Leeds score, I think we've definitely got it in us to, you know, see it out. But I think if Blackburn win, as Eds will go and we'll, and we'll lose. And that's exactly what happened. The body language on them when that goal went in. You know, if, when you think about it, there was still, including added time, there was still about 14 minutes left. 
So there was time for Leeds to, you know, get an equaliser at least. And yet a point wouldn't have been ideal at all. But let's be honest, a defeat was definitely not ideal and that's what occurred. And, you know, it, it's bad that I was thinking, you know, I, I, I would take a point now. Please just give us a point. You know, we should be wanting to win in home games. We had two home games this week and we've got one point from them. Last three games out of a possible nine, we've, we've got one point. One point. Very, very disappointing. Very, very disappointing. Some of those being suffocated, it's Farker's job to free him up. Yeah, exactly. As we're playing on Monday, would it suit us? As we nine day breaking that. Yeah, hopefully that's the only good thing about it. I would much prefer just to play at the weekend, but obviously Sky TV um is the priority these days. It's which fan here where ha we have Hurst and Burns back for the last three games, plus Hull will be out of playoffs by then. Also, we play Coventry as their fourth game inside 10 days, plus again. Yeah, look, mate, I, I, I think... I thought you were talking about me then when you said Hurst, because that's my last name as well. Um, but, look, it's, uh, it's not just us that are bottling it at the minute, mate. Leicester and yourselves are both fumbling the bag at the minute. For you to draw two games in a row at Portman Road is unheard of this season. Couldn't get a goal past Watford. And then you draw to Middlesbrough, who obviously Leeds have got next up. Um, the good thing for us is that obviously we play twice before you play. Um I think you're underestimating Hull and Coventry a little bit there. In in all honesty, you know they are proving to be tough games for most teams um, this season. So I wouldn't wouldn't count your lucky stars just yet. It's definitely not over. You know Southampton are well back in the mix now, one hundred percent. So yeah, I would I would pipe down if I was you, pal. Um, Gray should be rested. He's looking burnt out and under stress. Yeah, potentially Adams. I don't know how confident are you for getting top two. Um, there's a bit, a bit of a discussion going on here. We've missed the bar, hopefully. Very confident players of great mental strength. Plus, we was there last year. Yeah, but that was League One, mate, in all fairness. Look, I, I know you've had a great season, you know, coming up from League One, but the calibre of teams is completely different. Completely different. Hull and, Hull and Coventry if you use them as examples, would probably, you know, piss League One. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't count that. I'm not saying you won't win them both. You might very well do that. But the fact that you're acting this confident is crazy given your recent form. Still not beating Norwich in 15 years though, have you, pal? Um, do, 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 do. As a Leeds fan, don't think our players are mentally strong enough. Pressure is hit um, for six. Yeah, potentially. You know, hopefully we can get back to it. Don't we know? Games one point from six will cost us. You were so angry yesterday, Charlie. Never seen you that angry before. Mate, I was... Put it this way. I'm not the biggest of drinkers by any stretch. But I came in last night. There was a few ciders in the fridge and I... Gulps them all off in space of about 20 minutes. Um, yeah, I wasn't an happy bunny. Took the dog straight for a walk last night just to clear my head. Um, and then I came back and did that review. The walk didn't really clear my head that much. I was in, in, in effect, I was actually more angry. Um, yeah, it was like a funeral procession walking out of Ellen Road yesterday. And it just felt like. It felt like that was our season over. But mathematically at the minute, it is not over until the fat lady sings. So, like I said, we just need to do what we need to do, win our games and hope for the best. We're going to wrap it up in a few moments, guys. Um, so, I'll just get into your last few comments. Southampton, it's switched go up. Okay, fair enough if that's your opinion. 
No striker for us are on fire. This is where we need them most. Perot never had... Mm, yeah. Southampton win Tuesday three points behind Leeds game in hand. Yeah. Again, squeaky bum time. But it's definitely not over yet. It isn't over. We're so great the Coventry score. I did a 30-mile walk. Bloody hell. Um, I thought... Yeah, look. Right. Yeah. And that's all by the by now. That's gone. The January window has gone now, so there's no point speaking about that. And yeah, I came on the review last night and said that we'd bottled it and it was over. But technically it isn't. And you know, that's the small bit of positivity that I can give you at the minute, guys, is that it isn't over. The league table suggests it mathematically. Leicester are not in good form. We're not in good form. And I don't care what that Ipswich fan says, they're not in good form either. Their last three games have been lost, drawn, draw. Our last three have been lost, drawn, lost. And Leicester's, yes, they won last weekend, but it's won, lost, lost. Everyone's in bad form. Southampton are probably the only team that are gathering a bit of momentum. Preston on Tuesday night won't be an easy game for them. You know, they've still got to play Leicester at the King Power, which a draw would be the perfect scenario there. Um, or a Leicester win, to be fair. Um, in fact, no, actually, no, sorry, no, a draw. A draw would be the perfect um, outcome there. But yeah, let's just have a brief look ahead to Middlesbrough away. Get your score predictions for that in the chat now. I know when um, eight days out, and obviously I will be doing predicted 11s, your match previews next weekend, closer to the time, of course. Um, but get a brief Quick score predictions in the chat for Middlesbrough against Leeds United a week on Monday. Ooh, I know I said earlier that I don't think we'll win, but the more I think about it, will we win? I'm going to go for a very tight 2-1 win. Either a 2-1 win or a 2-2 draw, I think. Um, and the way it's going at the minute, the 2-2 two -two draw is probably the most likely. To be fair, if Leeds score a goal, it'll be amazing, won't it? Because the last two games, we couldn't hit a barn door. <sighs> but yeah, I think we'll leave it there, guys, before I ramble on any longer. God, Kevin's gone with a 1-0 Borough win. <sighs> and on that note, show his heart says 2-1 Leeds, head says 3-1 to Borough. Oh, my God. Oh, and again, I'm not, I'm not having a go at that. I'm just, oh, I am very much of the opinion though that regardless of what happens in the Leicester games, Southampton games, Ipswich games, if we lose to Middlesbrough next week, I think that's it done. Then I, I, I think that would be it in in my opinion. That would be the last straw. Um, but. Like Matthew Thomas is saying, Borough will not sit back, especially at home in front of their own fans. Borough will come out to play and to try and prove a point. They don't like us. No team likes us, but they definitely don't. They'll want to ruin the party, believe me. And like JC's saying here, no Luke Ayling or Sam Greenwood for them. So that's two first teamers out because they're inel ineligible to play against us that could be an ad you know advantageous for us as well um but yeah i think the way they play will suit us down to the ground and you know hopefully the final score um suggests that um yeah so then We'll leave it there. Like I say, guys, really, really do appreciate all of the engagement in the live chat tonight. It's been a very good debate and a lot of good points raised, as always. Massively appreciate all the love and support on the channel at the minute, guys. If you are brand new to the channel, please make sure that you're subscribing. It's completely free. Hit the subscribe button. It will really help me out. We're about 130 away from my next goal of hitting 3K. That would be amazing if we could do that as soon as possible. Please smash a like on the stream if you haven't already as well. It just helps get it out there to more people. 
hit that notification bell and get your comments in if you are watching after the live stream ends. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday night. I'm not sure when I'll be next on the channel. Obviously, there's quite a big gap in between games now. But if anything occurs or if I've got something on my mind that I want to do a video on, I will keep you updated on social media. But as I said, enjoy the rest of your night. Have a great week and I'll see you in a bit. Cheers.